you know, what I can see is one of the blessings about being up here. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's good. Praise the Lord for that. We'll put it back on again when we come down, but I think I'm far enough away. You're good. Right here. I think I'm more than two meters away. And I'm certainly far enough away from home. I like that one there with the beach scene on it. That, that's really good. I like that very, very much. And I'm very happy to be here. Of course, this is a real honor for me and a blessing to be here in Bilston with you. And Lori and I are thrilled to be here today at New Life Fellowship in Bilston. Thank you, Pastor Reverend, for the invitation. We're happy to be here with Brother and Sister Ramrut, with Joshua and Luke, Amen. Brother Lawrence. Amen. Met Brother Lawrence last year in Lendidno, yes. and we congratulate him on completing his one-year course of studies at the Harvest Bible College Amen. in Glasgow. Amen. That was a wonderful thing. Yes. Time flies, doesn't it? Just seems like yesterday that we're meeting each other, had a nice lunch together, and then he was off to Bible school, and now he's back. Wow, you see? So all of this that we're talking about today, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Before you know it, it'll just be in the history books. Just like 1918, 1919, when they had the Spanish flu. Well, none of us were there. My mother's here, but she wasn't there. She wasn't even born yet. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and most people, don't even, most people don't even remember it. There's very few people that remember it. So as we go forward, our lives are in God's hands. Yeah. Our lives are in God's hands. That's where our lives are. They're in God's hands. Because without Him, we're nothing. And that's, that's just the way it is. So we're also happy that for the past three years, Lori and I, just to catch up a little bit, because you don't know much about us, I'm sure, but for the last three years, Lori and I have been actively involved as international distributors of All the Fullness by David Campbell. This is a masterpiece thesis on the oneness of God. Uh, it was written by my father in 1973, whenever he was pastoring in Elgin, Scotland. And it is amazing what has happened over the last three years. This book has been republished and it's now available worldwide through the Amazon network. Incredible stuff that has been going on just in three years. This book is being used as a textbook to teach the message of the oneness of God at present in Hong Kong, Macau, the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Botswana, South Africa, Burundi, and over 200 pastors alone have received this book for their education of their congregations in Zambia alone. God is moving moving, powerful. This is an amazing thing, and we're very honored to be a part of what God is doing through the message of the oneness of God. Isn't it wonderful to know who we're serving? We actually know who we're serving. Jesus Christ is Lord. Many have said that this is one of the finest books written on the oneness of God. But this Hallelujah. is the finest written on the oneness of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. Our God. Our God. Amen. I embrace Him as my God. He is my God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. Amen. He's my God. He's personally my God. I love him. I appreciate him. I worship him. I am completely focused on him. I am not distracted by this world. I am completely focused on my God. So I am grateful that he has adopted me 
into his family. Amen. Amen. He adopted me into his family by the price of his own precious blood. The blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all of our sins. Not some of them. Not a select few. But all of our sins. Amen. You might have been the worst sinner in the world. You might have made mistakes beyond belief. I made mistakes beyond belief. But the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. And so we are thrilled and excited to be ambassadors and representatives of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we have diplomatic privilege. Diplomatic privilege. We walk in the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am so grateful that one day I was walking through a business that I was a part of. And someone said, as I walked through the service department, and they said to another mechanic, his father is very wealthy, you know. And I said, yes, he is. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Yes. He owns the cattle. You know what is beautiful? Yes, he's your father as well. He's not just mine. He's yours. We're brothers and sisters in the Lord today. We are so thankful to be here and to be a part of what the Lord is doing in the world right now. There's so much good going on. There's so many exciting things that are happening. God is at work, and God cannot be stopped. Amen. Amen. Regardless of what anybody can say or what anyone can do, God cannot be stopped. And you know what? At Calvary, the devil thought he got him, and the next thing he heard was... Hello! I've come here for the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And I'm taking them with me. And you're done, devil. Hallelujah. That's all. He's just the devil is a has been. Thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil is a has been. He's just an old windbag. <laughs> just likes to scare you. But thanks to the Lord, he's a has -man. He's a has -man. Huh? Aren't you glad? Can we thank the Lord? Can we give a hand to the Lord? Thank you for the victory, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the victory, Lord. I was able to take a little bit of extra time there because kindly the pastor read the uh, scripture verses that I that I had sent him last night. He asked for them very kindly, and so now I was just able to get a little bit ex get excited a little quicker. That's all. You see, I was able to get excited just a little bit quicker. That's all. So you see, what we're here about today is we're simply asking the Lord. Since Brother Ram Rutten said, Brother Gordon, would you come and speak on uh, Men's Sunday? And I was said, yes, thank you. That's a great honor. I hope you can hear me all right. Yes. I'm not good with these microphones, so I hope that you can hear me all right. You see? And so whenever he asked me, I simply went to prayer with my wife, and I said, Lord, all I need from you is the script. All I need from you is the script. I only want what you want to say and that's it. Because you said to Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. So what is it that you would like to say to your people today? And so here we are. Here we are. Men's Sunday. So what are we going to talk about on Men's Sunday? We're going to talk about the greatest man that ever lived. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. And so when we look at the verses that Brother Ram Rutten kindly read today, Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 12, we have to realize the theme that is coming from those verses. What is the theme that is coming from those verses? What is the theme that is coming from those verses. 
The theme is simply this. Miracles happen here. Miracles happen here. And again, he came into Capernaum after some days. And guess what? The word got out. It was noised abroad. What? He's in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. And when Jesus is in the house, miracles happen here. Plain and simple. When he's in the house, miracles happen. And guess what? They came. They crowded the place. They filled the streets. They filled the house. It was so, so crowded that four guys, four men, four men brought their chum that was on a bed and he hadn't walked and they brought him and they looked and they said, holy smoke, the place is packed out. How are we going to get him in to where Jesus is? So what they did was they just dug a hole in the roof. Hallelujah. Sometimes you've got to be that desperate. Sometimes you've got to be that desperate that you're willing to do whatever it takes to get into the presence of Jesus Christ. Am I selling myself short? Am I selling myself short because I'm not getting into his presence often enough? I'm not getting into his presence often enough? Am I selling myself short? Because when Jesus is in the house, miracles happen here. I'm not sure what miracle you need today. The definition of a miracle is an event not explicable by natural or scientific law. It simply means God did it. That's all. It simply means God did it. Just like he spoke the world into existence. What miracle do you need God to speak into your life today? Jesus, God manifested in the flesh, spoke the miracle. Yes. He said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy son, my son. Son. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Can you tell your neighbor, leave your mask on, can you look over at them and just say, miracles happen here? Miracles happen here. You see, I don't have to go anywhere else. I don't have to go anywhere else. I don't have to go to a big church somewhere. I don't have to go, I just have to go where Jesus is. I just got to go to a house. If I've got to dig a hole in the ceiling, well, so be it. But I've got to get into the presence of the Lord. I've got to get into the presence of the Lord. I have got to get into the presence of the Lord. Of the Lord. Miracles happen here. Miracles happen here. How do you know they happen here, Brother Gordon? How do you know? I know because I've been here before. <laughs> I I've been here before. Does. Maybe not when you were here, but I've been here before. Mm. Yes. Amen. 1975, when this church was turned around mm. and the pulpit was down there. I came here for a, a series of meetings. 1975. Miracles happened here. 1975. Well, pastor Ian McRobert was the pastor here at that time. Brother Fred Turley and his wife Rose had gone to Edinburgh. <clears throat> and I was asked to come. I was the National Home Missions Evangelist for the United Pentecostal Church 
of Great Britain and Ireland. I was 24 years old. Mm. I came here to speak a series of meetings. Now, when I talk about a series of meetings in 1975, I'm talking about seven sermons in a week. We had Monday off. We spoke Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and two, day, two times on a Sunday. That's it. We were there every night and during the day on Sunday and on Sunday night. So one of those nights, I don't have any idea what night it was. I don't really care what night it was because it's all about him. It's never about me. At the end of the service that particular night, I just felt that there were needs in this church building that we're in here right now, 1975. Hallelujah. 1975. So I asked anybody that wanted to come up for prayer to come up for prayer. And a woman came up to the front. And we took the oil and anointed her with oil and prayed. Hallelujah. Simply. Be healed yes. in Jesus' name. Thank you. The doctors reported and she came back and testified like you folks are testifying here today. I love testimony time. Amen. That lifts up the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. She came back before the services were over <clears throat> for that week. She said, I just want to testify that when I came up for prayer the other night, I had been diagnosed with breast cancer, and I was not given a good prognosis, but I went and God has healed me and touched me and delivered me from breast cancer, and my name is Jane Evans, and to my knowledge, she's still living today. simply to you that are here today right now, thank God that you're here. Those of you that are home, you qualify. Mm. Hallelujah. You qualify. You're yes. here. Yes. Yes. Thanks to modern technology, mm. Mm -hmm. you're here. Miracles happen here. How do I know miracles happen here? I was here last Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I was here last Sunday. Do you mind if I take a little drink? My mouth's a little dry. Mm. I was here last Sunday. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 says this. Hmm. Expecting just special things to happen here at the Sabbath. I'm just came here expecting it. I just came here expecting it. Special things are happening already. Tracy Forbes is here. Tracy Forbes, you don't know about Tracy Forbes. She's here. She is Wolverhampton's number one cake baker. She owns WolveryForbes.com and she has a Jamaican recipe, a hundred years old, for fruit cake. And we would, if we had a longer time, we could tell you the miracle of the birthday cake. But we won't do that. But we are very thankful Amen. that Tracy and her family are tuning in with us here Amen. today. But think about this. Think about this miracle. Happened here last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I'm confident. You see, there's something about it. Whenever you talk about Jesus, when you talk about Jesus, when you talk about Jesus, you can be confident. You don't have to con concern yourself about whether or not this is really something that will take place. You can be confident. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And last Sunday afternoon, I witnessed a water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Gurchin was baptized in Jesus' name. 
and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Get the word out. Jesus is in this house. He is here. We are extensions of his ministry. We are extensions of his ministry. We're ambassadors. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. What an honor, what a privilege, what an absolute marvelous thing. We are ambassadors. And when we think about what happens when Jesus comes into the house, the ceiling caves in, the bed comes down, the man gets up and walks, and they turn around and say, we never saw it on this fashion. You might have gone to church since you were a little boy. You might have gone to church since you were a little girl. You went to the temple. You were there. You saw the sacrifices. You saw the priests. You saw the Pharisees. You saw everything else. But one thing is for sure. We never saw it on this fashion until Jesus showed up. Until Jesus showed up. When Jesus shows up, miracles happen here. <laughs> Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Huh? Let's talk about this one. Let's talk about this one because these were ambassadors. The Lord Jesus has already gone home. He has gone back to glory. He has gone away with the promise that I will come back. The promise that we hold fast to our hearts today, 2020, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We await his return. But while he's gone, he's still here. Amen. The church is active. We're his ambassadors. We're his representatives. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. Remember what that means. He had never walked in his life before. Yeah. Yes, sir. Remember how significant that is in, in just a moment. Huh? Not only, well, I, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> this is very exciting to me. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John, ambassadors of Jesus, <laughs> about to go into the temple, asked alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us! <laughs> and give heed unto them, and he gave heed. Do you understand? I believe you do, that you have to stay focused. You can't become distracted by this world and by the shenanigans. Shenanigans in one form or another since the fall of Adam and Eve have always been going on in this world. It's one thing after another. It doesn't matter. It's shenanigans. It's just the devil trying to stir things up. It's the devil trying to rob you of your victory. But the fact of the matter is it is time to pay attention. Pay attention. Take heed. And he gave heed unto them. Now what was likely going on whenever he gave heed unto them? What was likely going on? Do you, can you imagine this? I mean, there's other people going into the temple. Yes. And he'd rather be rattling his cup. He's missing opportunities here to get a few coins. Mm -hmm. Huh? This is what he does every day. His friends bring him to the temple every day. So they out by the gate beautiful so he can rattle his cup. But he just had some feeling yes. in his heart something. that something different mm -hmm. was about to happen for him. Take heed. Mm -hmm. Can you believe right now 
that there's something different about to happen for you here right now that God is able to take you to a different level of your spiritual understanding of your spiritual experience that will give you a greater measure of faith than you have ever ever had before greater measure of faith than you have ever dreamed of it is it possible that you can pay attention just for a moment and say god i'm here i'm expecting something different to happen to me right now Jane Evans walked into this building with breast cancer. She walked out of it without it. She left her breast cancer at the altar. Gave it to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and he lifted him up, and immediately... Hallelujah! Hallelujah! His feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, mm -hmm. never done that before. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Stood up, never done that before. Ooh. Wow, think about that. Mm. And walked. Amen. Never done that before. Remember? He was lame from his mother's womb. Mm. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. God not only healed him. In the name of Jesus, Nat of Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. God not only healed him, he taught him how to leap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> huh? He taught him how to stand up. He taught him how to walk. Where God guides, he provides. He is not a prankster. He's not a jokester. He's going to give you what you need to be successful in his kingdom. Amen. So can you expect something? Praise you. I, I just feel the presence of the Lord here right now, to be honest with you. See? See, and all the people. All the people. Yes. Saw him. Amen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Saw him walking and leaping and praising God. Talk about testimony time. <laughs> huh? Talk about testimony time. Mm -hmm. There it is. People were just astounded. They were astonished. They were amazed. This is the guy I did. Can I have my 225p back? I just put it in your cup. You don't need it anymore. You don't need that 25p anymore. You don't need that 50p anymore. You don't need that pound coin I put in your cup anymore. Because now you are walking. And you are leaping. And you are praising God. You see, you don't need the things of this world anymore. Whenever you get in touch with Jesus. And when Jesus gets in touch with you. Huh? You don't need the things of this world anymore. Hallelujah. You don't need it anymore. Miracles display the power of God. Miracles give us the opportunity to start the Jesus conversation with people. Amen. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him. That belief. What are we talking about today? Jesus. Plain and simple. We're talking about Jesus because if you remember, you remember what I said before. Pastor Ram read it as well. You all read it yourself. Yes, you did. And again, he entered into comparison. And again, 
He entered into New Life Fellowship. Hallelujah. And again, he's here. He's here right now. Hallelujah. Miracles happen here is not just a catchy phrase. It's a promise. It's a fact, not a false hope. Mark 16 says, And these signs shall follow them. That belief. What's following you? Doubt, fear, misunderstanding, terror. <laughs> What's following you? What's trailing behind you? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. They'll cast out devils. In my name. See? That's why we're talking about the most wonderful, most marvelous man that ever lived. This is Men Sunday. We're lifting up Jesus. You may be watching this at home. But this applies to you as well. You have encouraged faith in your home by listening today. Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or three gather in my name, I am there. There am I. There I am. Whatever way you want to put it. Jesus is in that room where you are right now. Whatever you need, he's there to provide it. Whatever you need. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So in Jesus' name, can you say miracles happen? Everybody wants to come up with a new slogan these days. My new slogan is miracles happen here. Where Jesus is, miracles happen here. That's my new slogan. Miracles happen here. Miracles happen here. There he is and straightway. And it was noise. It was noise. It was noise. It was noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was noise. Can you get the word out, can you? Can you get the word out, can you? Can you get the word out? Can you get the word out? Can you get the word out? Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Hey, you better be prepared. That seal may come down. <laughs> yes. If you can just get the word out. Just get the word out. Just let them know. Missions, months, whatever. You know what? It's missions all the time. We just got to get the word out. But you know one of the places we got to get the word out? Each other. We've got to get the word out to each other. We've got to encourage one another. We've got to say miracles happen here. 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 Because he is in the He's in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Would you be prepared to stand with me right now? Would you just lift your hands to the Lord? Would you just say, God, I came here today expecting something. I wasn't quite sure exactly what it was. But I have this need that I've been talking to you about. I have had this need that I have been talking to you about. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and miracles happen in this.
Miracles happen here. Can you do it right now? Can you let your faith reach out to the Lord? The Lord. The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 